host by the Wyatt Six before Smackdown this week, simply with a picture of Bo and Chad. There you are with this tweet. Now, obviously, this is a load of nonsense, but you have to translate it. And when you do, it becomes the trust of the innocent is the liar's most useful tool. So no real surprise that the Wyatt Six doesn't seem to be finished with Chad Gable. Obviously, we're hoping they're going to set up a match for SummerSlam of some sorts. But as of right now, at the time of recording, we haven't had it revealed yet who the next interviewee may be. So we may be seeing that tomorrow on social media. But there is an interesting story about Braun Strowman potentially joining the Wyatt Six. This kind of come out of nowhere and it came from Braun Strowman himself. Talking to WWE Germany, he said, I hope they stay the hell away from me. They are scary. But then he said that he can feel it pulling me towards them, talking about him being lured to potentially join the Wyatt Six. He said, if the Wyatt Six is able to get that monster to come back out of me, I fear for myself and anything that's walking around me. Now, I find this really interesting, not just because of what Braun said, but he, who he said it to. He said it to an official WWE affiliate. So, that's interesting. The fact that WWE is heading to Germany for Bash at Berlin, like, as the next pay-per-view. Like, this is why this media is happening. It's a hype up WWE around Germany before then. So the fact that Braun Strowman spent that time talking about potentially joining the Wyatt Six makes you wonder if it actually could happen. I think the obvious ties with Braun and the Wyatt family, obviously Braun and Eric Rowan technically being family after what Rowan said, and obviously Braun Strowman being this monster, there's a lot to tie into there that could see him join that Wyatt Six group. And how can I not mention this? This is absolutely incredible. Now, looking at the picture, you might not know what this is, but this is indeed Bray Wyatt and Bo Dallas versus the Usos in FCW. And this is important because WWE's uploaded the match in full. The first time ever, an unseen match, WWE has uploaded to their new YouTube channel, WWE Vault. Bray and Bo as a tag team. Check it out. It's awesome. This is Things You Might Have Missed from WWE Smackdown. Make sure you hit the like button. And if you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button too. Okay, very serious point. Nick Aldis was back on SmackDown this week, as we know. Nick Aldis wasn't there last week. So if Nick Aldis is back this week, why have we still not got Pretty Deadly, the musical? Look at this, look. Even my new best friend, who I don't know yet, has bought a sign of SmackDown saying we want Pretty Deadly, the musical. This is a thing. We want Pretty Deadly, the musical. Give us what we want, goddammit. Cody Rhodes would kick off SmackDown this week as Cody would obviously talk about Randy Orton and the Bloodline and Solo Sokoa following last week's attack on Randy Orton. Obviously hyping it up a lot that Randy is Cody's brother. You know, that hill turn's gonna sting, isn't it? Cody would be interrupted, though, by A-Town Down Under, who would get into the ring saying that it was Cody's fault that Theory got attacked by Jacob Fatu. Cody knows where this is going, so he threw the first shot, but the beatdown was on. Obviously, a short beatdown. Cody would then be handed a chair, get back into the ring and clean house. Cody didn't feel like he needed a tag partner, but Nick Aldis said he does need one for tonight's main event. Cody and a partner versus A-Town Down Under. Well, Solo Sokoa would respond to this by saying tonight's tag main event better be a handicap match or someone's going to pay. If you're on Team Cody, you're against the bloodline. Well, the mystery tag team partner would be revealed as Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens revealing on social media this week the good news that his mum kicked out and is doing much better. That's good to hear. The main event tag match in itself was good. I love the little detail of Kevin Owens knocking down the giant prime bottle. Obviously, the massive history with Kevin Owens and Logan Paul there. Sort of Kevin Owens not forgetting. It would be a miscommunication again by A-Town Down Under that would allow Cody Rhodes and Kevin Owens to pick up the win. However, that warning from the bloodline would come into effect as they came out after the match. Jacob Fatu proving the difference maker once again as Jacob Fatu destroyed Kevin Owens as Cody was forced to watch. Cody Rhodes then triple power bombed through the announce table, shades of Randy Orton last week. Then the chair put over the head of Kevin Owens, run into the ring post. 
Kevin Owens is dead at this point, genuinely. And of course, Cody Rhodes laid out too. Question is now, who stops the bloodline? Andrade will go one-on-one -on -one with Carmelo Hayes on the first match of tonight's SmackDown. Andrade, during his entrance, they would acknowledge him as the WWE Speed Champion, not only by saying that he was a Speed Champion, they actually put it on the graphic in the corner that he is the Speed Champion, here's how you watch Speed, etc. But then it really hit me that he came out without the Speed Championship. Now, I know the Speed title is nothing to do with SmackDown, but it's still a championship belt. Now, there's this conception that speed is not relevant, and I think a lot of fans would agree with that. But when you're not even including the championship, when the champion makes his entrance on TV, what are we doing here? But I won't allow that to actually take away from the match that we saw, because the match we saw was absolutely amazing. Andrade and Hayes, the crowd reaction was on point. Andrade would pick up the win. Maybe controversial to some people that want to see like Carmelo Hayes excel in WWE, but I'm happy Andrade is getting this push. The crowd reaction for him was strong tonight. Continue on this kind of trajectory. Sky's the limit. Details for the SummerSlam kickoff show that's free to attend if you're a fan have been revealed today on SmackDown. If you want to know, they are on the screen. They hyped up Bailey versus Nia Jax for SummerSlam, obviously, with like a sit-down interview with both women. Bailey obviously saying that Nia Jax hasn't changed, that the way she injured her in 2017 is the same she is today. It's not because she's big and powerful, it's because she's big and clumsy, sort of playing on Nia Jax botching a lot. Nia hasn't really done that since returning. But I like this. There's history, there's a reason, there's personal animosity. There's obviously a championship involved. Nia won Queen of the Ring to get there. I'm actually excited to see this match at SummerSlam. Talking of matches, though, earlier today, Bianca Belair and Chelsea Green were basically arguing over who would get to see Nick Aldis first. They agreed to have a match and basically see who got to speak to him first, which really made no sense because when Bianca made her entrance, Wade Barrett said props to Nick Aldis for getting this match made. And I'm like, well, surely that means they spoke to Nick Aldis. What? The match between Bianca and Chelsea was very short indeed, with Bianca getting the roll-up very early on to get the win. Bianca Belair victorious. Then the women's tag team champions would appear on screen saying that they've heard that Jade and Bianca won a shot. They're not sure about a rematch, but they're going to give them a closer look at the women's tag belts next week. So we're going to assume we're going to get a face-off with the tag champs and Bianca and Jade next week on SmackDown. Nick Aldis was in the ring tonight with a contract for SummerSlam. Unfortunately, no, it wasn't for Pretty Deadly the Musical. I know, I'm just as disappointed as you are. It was, though, for a US title match between LA Knight and Logan Paul. Logan Paul saying he doesn't need this match with LA Knight. LA Knight needs it with Logan Paul. And then, obviously, we got five minutes of trash talking backwards and forwards and it was good, man. Logan Paul calling LA Knight his real name, Sean, trying to get under his skin. LA Knight reminding the WWE fans of the history between the two. Because think about it. These two are feuding prior to Money in the Bank last year. This is a typical Triple H trait with his booking. Long-term storytelling. And it's paying off. It would finally be LA Knight saying to Logan Paul that balls must not run in your family because Jake... Jake Paul is willing to get into the ring with Mike Tyson, yet you're scared to get in the ring with me that would finally see LA Knight sign the contract. So with the match on, question has to be asked, is this finally time that LA Knight becomes a champion in WWE? You've got to think so. That line from Logan Paul saying that LA Knight hasn't had a defining moment in 20 years, this has to be it. This has to be. Surely, surely LA Knight's winning. Right? Lots of hype tonight for Tiffy time. And genuinely, her entrance tonight was absolutely amazing. She would go one-on-one -on -one with Mishin. It would be Bailey equalising Nia Jax on the outside of the ring. And then destroying the briefcase that would see a distraction, allowing Mishin to take advantage and get the win over Tiffany. Nothing wrong with that at all. I really like this. Obviously, Bailey repaying the favour. Mishin has had her back recently. And what this now means, are we about to get the custom briefcase for Tiffany? I hope so. Fun show. I'm going to do my best to try and avoid spoilers for next week. But genuinely tonight, 
solid 8.5 out of 10. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. If you are new to the channel, go ahead, hit the subscribe button, turn on notifications. You'll never miss another upload. Like the video, share the video, and I'll catch you next time. Peace!